Good evening, Fernwood. It is Magical Coach Sailor Neil, and it's time for us to Sleeping Pills by Moonlight and Chicken Soup by Daylight with another episode of Mary Hartman. Mary Hartman. We are watching episode 275 from April 22nd, 1977. It is a landmark, and after this episode, there are exactly 10 weeks of episodes left. There are 50 episodes after today. That is our landmark, so let's just refresh our memory on yesterday. We started the episode with George Shumway getting gussied up in his glorious Guardians of Good attire. Grandpa comes out and teases him a little bit about both being in the elderly category, but George pushes back a little bit saying, this is my secret outfit and my secret appointment. Of course, both of these older men are missing Martha Shumway who has moved out of the house then Kathy comes over with a dish from Martha. It's some hot dogs and sauerkraut, and that makes George even more nostalgic. But George is too stubborn to ask Martha to come home, and at that point, he gets a call from an old flame that really doesn't go very well. So he asks Kathy what Martha is thinking, and Martha is thinking that George is a big jerk. And George is not sure what to do, and Kathy, who is actually tired of having Martha staying over at her apartment, is also a bit out of sorts. Speaking of Martha and the apartment, she was redecorating and had a spill that Mac was happily there to rescue her from. He thanked the late Howie for the use of his film projector, and Martha asks him to sit so that they can get to know each other a little bit better. Max says that he is bringing a stag reel to the GGG party and Martha seems curious and asks him to play a bit of it and, and Max a little bit shy but Martha encourages him so she turns down the lights and they play the movie together. And Martha's impression of the film is that it's kind of boring to see people having sex together when there isn't really any love involved and potentially is there chemistry between Mac and Martha? And then finally at the Hartman bedroom, Mary is calling for help because Tom, her husband, has been locked in jail for murder. She reaches out to Martha who wonders why Mary's calling so late. And Kathy really doesn't want to help either. So Mary puts out the call to George who is also being woken up in the middle of the night. And George is also lonely but then remembers that Heather is in the home with Mary, so Mary hangs up pretty quickly and calls Heather into the room. Heather is also a bit bothered to be woken up in the middle of the night, but Mary seems to be friendly. Heather is skeptical about why Mary wants to spend so much time with her, and Mary says that she's lonely. So Heather jumps into bed without questioning that, and then proceeds to eat chips, and that keeps Mary awake. And Mary says, you know, it's probably a better idea that you just sleep in your own bed. So Heather leaves, and Mary sits there, pondering her new emotional reality. And yesterday was a lot of sitting in the emotions of our current scenario. I expect we will see some plotty things happening today, since it is a big Friday. So why don't we strap in? <laughs> Hello, Tom, Tom. Look here, boy, you on front page. Let me see that. Let me see it, huh? What does it say? Let me, uh, let me see it. Let me see it. You don't have to read this. You know there ain't nothing but a bunch of damn lies in the newspaper. All you got to know is that the GGG is going to save your neck, boy. That's right. Organization is out right now raising money for your defense. Charlie, Mac, George, hell, they all behind you, boy. I mean, you ought to feel lucky that you got friends that stand behind a murderer. Hell, they know I didn't do it. Just exactly the same way you know I didn't do it. <laughs> well, it, all, it ain't all that important. What I know, it's what I got to say that's going to pickle your buns, boy. I mean, the chief witness against you is the chief of police. That's bad, Hartman. Look, even though my testimony could send you to the chair, I want you to know that I'm just an all right kind of guy. I mean, hell, I hope that the new cop coming in here is as all right as I am. And to show you that my heart is in the right place, I think I'll just go and pay a visit on Mary. Hey! Well, 
I'm just going to see if she needs any little thing done while her husband's on ice. Well, you stay away from her, you dirty, stinking rat. Now, you understand that? You stay away from her. I, you know what? I mean, I really got to tell you that I did admire that girl a lot when we was working on the assembly line. I used to say to myself, Texas, that Mary Hartman is your kind of gal. Sweet and saucy. <laughs> I liked it a lot when she brought me the mess of the Twinkies, too. Hey. Don't ever let me catch you messing around with Mary Hartman. Hey, butt out, Merle. Don't let me ever catch you telling him not to let you catch him messing around with my wife. Right. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, Tom. What, what uh, what's all hey, this? Hey, Merle, look, come here, come here, come here. I mean, look, Mary, Mary, I mean, she's so vulnerable right now. You I understand? understand that. No, but that point is, I mean, some other guy could come along. I know, I know up. all of that, Tom. I mean, Mary lives in this little fairyland fantasy. You know, she's got this thing about some knight coming along on a white horse. Yeah. Hey, not you, Jeter, not you. I mean, you are no knight on a white horse. A tricycle, maybe, but not a white horse. Tom Hartman, man, what's the matter with you? What, what are you insulting me for? I come over here special to see you. Well, I, look, Merle, I know, I know. It's just that, uh, I guess you can't help being such a lech. That's right. I don't know. Coming from you, you know, I appreciate that you know that, Tom. It yeah, well, makes it a lot easier, but... Heck, you got nothing to worry about anyway with Mary. She's crazy about you, Thomas, with them big blue eyes of hers and that little twinge of mischief in them. And of course, some rich, full red lips that give a promise of... Well, a pleasure, the, the likes of which I've never seen in my hey, natural hey, life. Hey, I, hey, hey. Hey, can it, will you? Just can the description, will you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably right. Let's let's get off that. That's just something to you know make you look forward to going home to. Okay, let's look at it that way. Meantime, Thomas, uh, I got something here. I want you to sign. It's a little petition from the Guardian Party. Puts us on the state ballot there with me as a party chairman. What? Yeah. Well, you, you you came here expecting me to sign that? Sure. Yeah. You. What are you back? crazy? You're crazy. Hell, Mo, the G G G put me. In. I'm in jail. I'm behind bars, bro. Well, Tom, that don't mean your signature is not legal. My gosh, I mean, the only thing to make it in invalid here is if you, you know, if, I hate to get grotesque here, but if you were executed... Hey, Pearl, just stay out of here. I'll stay out of my life, you understand? Now get the hell out of here. You stay out of, stay out of my life and stay away from my wife, you understand? I'll tear you to pieces. All right, I swear Tom, to you, I'll tear okay, you. Okay, okay, all right. Wait a minute, are you causing problems again? No, 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 no. Come on. Yeah, I, was, I was just getting ready to leave. Anyway. It's okay. It's all right. Oh, listen, Chief. I want you to sign this here uh, Guardian Party petition, okay? Go ahead. Oh, put her down there. Sure thing, Merle. Uh, could I take this home and work on it? No, Chief. Just put your X down there, okay? Tom, listen. This may be in bad taste, but would you mind being a witness to the signature here? Yeah, you probably wouldn't. Go ahead. husband well prisons are allowed one call I mean haven't you ever heard of the Geneva Convention oh I see oh he's only allowed one outgoing call oh well, then would you do me a favor would you please tell him that his wife Mary is still trying to contact F. Lee Bailey no, that's F. That's F as in Frank. Oh, and also, would you tell him that she's still thinking about him a lot? And tell, tell him that I, um, I, uh, listen, if, if I, if I tell you something like, do you think you could keep it in confidence and it... No? Oh, fine. Okay. No, no, I'm sorry. It's too personal. No, 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 no. I'll tell him myself. No, when I see him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye. Hey, Mary. Hop up there on these handlebars and let's go for a little ride. Let me get them braids of yours flying in the wind. <laughs> huh? Oh, well, I don't know if I think it's that safe, especially without a crash. Hey, Mary, come on, please. Relax. Let's burn a little rubber here, huh? 
Come on. Oh, man. I just somehow don't think I should be joyriding through my kitchen when my husband's in jail. You want some coffee? No. Thank you. Barry, Tom would want it this way. He'd want you to put your, your woes and your pain on hold there for a minute, you know, and take a little ride. That's the way he'd want it. governor and tell him Tom's innocent. Mary, I've already called the governor several, several times here now, and we're, we're talking toll calls, you know, which, which is my pleasure, of course, but the uh, fact is he, he hadn't returned him. Now, it's my guess that he's probably real busy, and he will when he gets a chance, but... I guess I'll just be moseying on. Wait, Merle. Wait, Merle, I just realized I had an idea. You know, the jail people say that they won't let me talk to Tom on the telephone, but I'll bet that they'll put him on if you tell them to put him on. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait a minute, Mary. Now, look, I'm not real sure that Tom would appreciate me being over here with you alone. He's, he's... Yeah, hello, yeah, this is uh, Mayor Jeter. But Mayor Jeter! Yeah, listen, tell Texas to put that there alleged murder, that Tom Hartman, yeah, tell him to... Tell him to put him on the phone. I want him to talk to his wife for a second. Okay. Oh, how can I thank you, Mary? No, don't mention it, Mary. Or to okay. Tom either. Just. Okay, okay. You're a very big man, Mary. You really are. Thank you. Oh, Tom? Oh, Tom. Oh, Tom, you can't. You can't imagine how wonderful Merle has been. And it's because of him that we can speak on the phone. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 Tom, no, no. There's absolutely nothing going on between us. No, really. Oh, no, no, Tom, Tom, it's very ungrateful, Tom. No, no, Tom, no, please, no. This, Tom, this doesn't sound like you, though. This doesn't sound like him at all. I mean, it really does. Tom, Tom, Mer... Mer... Tom, Merle is a human being, and I think that you owe him an apology for that. Now, here... Hey, Tom, buddy, how you doing there? Yeah, well, listen, 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 let's don't even, uh, forget about the apology. Listen, did... Tom? Hello? Nothing. Listen, I really feel terrible. I mean, Tom would never have been so rude if it weren't for, yeah. you know, uh... No, I know. Murder one. Right. I understand that. I mean, well, my gosh, he has a he has a right to be a, a little testy here. I mean, he's he's in quite a bind, you know, Mary. How about it? <laughs> Rain drops keep falling on my head. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Actually, I'm here more in the uh, name of science than humanity. I uh, want to see the boy. Uh, well, presently, Doc, he's carrying behind that easy chair right now. Mmm. Good. I like that. Come on, darling, honey. The doctor's here. Come on. Come on. Um, I'll get him. Uh, come on, darling. He, he needs to look, look you over just a little bit. It's all right, honey. Nice. He's a nice man. Good boy. Good boy. That's real good. That's good. 
That's just beautiful. Well, I'm kind of proud. We, we do have a real fabulous relationship, you know, e even in spite of our distinctly different differences in our lifestyles, you know. Mmm, good. Uh, tell me about those uh, differences. Uh, it's all right, honey. Well, uh, for instance, like, you know, uh, we have kind of this fierce little battle last night at supper time. Um, I had this southern fried chicken, you know. You might find this a smidge nauseating, but uh, this adorable, precious child prefers it raw. Good, just as I expected. And um, also, uh, I know that a lot of children his age are, you know, picky and everything, but he seems to be tickularly picky, uh, like he needs to sniff everything, you know. And, uh, honey, if he don't like it, out it goes. What you seen dot in the lawn out there? A whole week's supply of Oreos. Ah, now does he eat nuts, fruits, vegetables, things like that? Loves him, just loves him. And hun, he eats the seeds, the rinds, all of it. And and also, hun, he he's on his all fours all the time. Hun, Great. Uh, now see, he wants a little vitamin L from me right now, don't you, darling? Oh, huh, that's sweet. But let me tell you something. I'll. He's like a normal child in this way, just like every other child on God's green earth. Hun, I'll rub your little tummy as soon as the doctor gets finished, okay, darling? Honey, do that now. Oh, 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 no, 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 fantastic. No, no. Definite signs of antisocial behavior. Now, that box there, you see, that is the closest thing resembling a bed that we can even remotely get him into. <laughs> here, here, uh, put this record on. Uh, Doc, I, I don't mean to be smart alecky or nothing, but it just don't seem like uh, an appropriate time for easy listening. Oh, no, 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 this is special. Really? What? Excellent in the scientific sense. You see, the child's disorderly manner may confirm my theory. Mrs. Haggers, what you just heard was an actual recording of Bigfoot. You saw how the boy reacted, and the rest of it fits in too. Uh, 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 acute sense of smell, rough elbows and knees, apparent deafness except for familiar sounds, a preference for raw meat, his animal behavior. Doctor, I, I, I mean, I'll grant you the child's behavior is social graces, maybe ain't what they should be, but I mean, he, I think it's harsh to call him an animal for Pete's sake. No, 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 no. It's wonderful because it fits in with my theory. Usually, it's wolves or bears that have been known to raise lost children in the wilderness, but this time, if my theory is correct, I'm sure it was Bigfoot. That makes this child completely unique and invaluable to science. And I've got him. <laughs> ah, honey. I don't, Doc, I, th I think you've been around germs too long, honey. Now, what we're talking about here is a child, not a microbe. Do you know what I'm saying here now? And anyway, even, even if it was true, I mean, well, how, how could a Bigfoot get a child? I mean, where, where would he get a little boy like this? I'd say he was uh, abandoned or orphaned. Well, why would Bigfoot leave him with us for... Well, there aren't many people who uh, uh, open their hearts to total strangers, especially strange strangers. Obviously, you're not too discriminating with your affections. <laughs> Maybe Bigfoot knew. I don't know. I... Life is mysterious, isn't it? I mean, Charlie and I always talked about... You know how much we wanted a child and everything, and we did always say that he would have to be someone real special. Oh, 
Charlie, come on, will you? Come on, come on. Charlie, let me ask you one more question, okay? Let me just ask you this, okay? Do you think that I did it? Do you? No. No, Tom. No, no, no way. No way, I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me what they say. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I, I saw you with the torch in your hand. It doesn't matter that, that you stinking all over of booze. That, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me that you swore that you'd have revenge on whoever was bombing the plant. And it doesn't matter, bother me that Texas and Vernon say that you did it. No, sir, as far as I'm concerned, you're in the clear, Tom. You are in the clear. Now, I'll tell you something. What? If somebody had tried to bomb Loretta, I would have done the same. See, that's Charlie, I didn't do it! God, I didn't do it, don't you understand that? My God almighty, Charlie! Have I ever lied to you? No. Never! You know what those guys are doing? They committed murder and I'm paying for it! Listen to me. Listen to me, I got it figured out, see? Here's what those guys did. Vernon and Texas bombed the plant. And Howie Freeze got on to him. So they knocked him off and they took the telethon money, see? Then they set up Dewey. They made it look like he was the guy responsible for the explosion on the assembly line. Then they killed him and now they're blaming me! Why? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, 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 but Howie Freeze knew. We should have talked to him while we had the chance. And how can you sit there and have such blind damn faith in that idiot Vernon? Jesus, the whole damn town is rotten. Fremont isn't rotten, Tom. No, no, it isn't. I mean, this newest tragedy is going to unite everything. Everything's going to be tip-top. Well, who the hell told you that? Vernon said... Jesus, Vernon! Vernon, Vernon, Vernon! I'm sick of that! What the hell, has he brainwashed everybody? No, Tom, I have... He didn't brainwash... All he did was be nice to me. I mean, I'm not... I mean, he's been nice to you, too. I mean, the GGG is paying for Heather's braces while you're here in jail. The GGG is taking care of Mary. Oh, Mary, I... Jesus, God almighty, Mary, oh, my God. Hey, hey, listen, you got to promise me something. You keep Merle Jeter away from her. Oh, come on, Tom. You don't have to worry about Merle Jeter. I mean, he, sure, he's a dishonorable, slimy, lecherous bum, but that, even with that, he's not Mary's type. What the hell are you talking about? Who the hell knows what type she, she likes? I mean, my God, she needs somebody right now, Charlie. Look, I let her down. I'm afraid somebody's gonna come right along and just pick her up, my little flower. Oh, come on now, Tom. Just relax. Take care of yourself. No, huh? Jesus, I don't want to relax, Charlie. Now, Listen Tom, to me. Hey, let me do something. Yeah. Bye, Hartman. Yeah. Right, Time's up, Tony. Keep smiling, Tom. He's in. He's in pretty bad shape. Now are you doing. Are you doing everything you can to take care of him now, Tex? Well, hell yes, Charlie. I mean, we are bringing in a special cop on the force just to take care of him. Guy's real experienced. Good. Uh, I don't know how much more he can take. I know. It's pitiful, ain't it? Now let's get some coffee. We start and end this episode in the jail cell with Tom, and we know that Tex is not being honest with Tom about the GGG, and I'm not sure if it's there to torture Tom or if because Tex is confused about the GGG's position on Tom. I know that Tex personally would rather that Tom were tortured or dead somehow. Tex's way of torturing Tom in this case was to say that he was going to pay attention to Mary 
And at the same time, we have Merle, who also wants to pay attention to Mary in his way. Tom wants neither of them to be paying attention to Mary. And this was the first mention that Tex made of a special cop that was going to come in with all of this experience. I mean, it's experience in what? Like, it's a murder investigation. So I'm not sure what any specific cop could do. You know, I mean, a detective would be doing the detective things of interviewing the suspects and gathering information. But there's so much dishonesty and untruth in this investigation that it would take a shovel to get past all of it. But we know at this point that Mary is going to be getting some potentially unwanted attention. And that is in the second scene with Merle visiting Mary. Tom had hinted that Mary dreamed of a white knight maybe jokingly said that Merle would be the white knight not on a horse but on a uh, tricycle and that's what Merle comes in on and Mary is just interested in getting Tom out of jail and Merle again he is interested in what he is interested in and not what Mary is interested in if he really felt things for Mary he would know how important her feelings for Tom are it's another question whether he can help, but, well, he's the mayor, he can do something to get Tom on the phone. And in this case, Mary does the one thing that Merle says not to do, which is not tell Tom that Merle was involved or there or anything, which makes sense from Merle's perspective. And Mary is just, she's not good at keeping this secret. That sets Tom off. And then there's that little raindrops are falling on your head sequence with Merle and Mary on the tricycle together and somewhat disturbing. Loretta gets a visit from the doctor who examines the wild child and that is another thing that is starting to get disturbing for me like where did this child come from? It's not uh, young enough to have been Kathy's baby like where did it come from? And in this case, you know, I've been thinking raised by wolves. Obviously, that's something that was specifically mentioned here. But in this case, the child was raised by Bigfoot. And that's uh, an authentic recording of a Bigfoot on vinyl. Who knows exactly what this means, that the child is raised by Bigfoot. But there it is. Then we're back in the jail with Charlie and Tom. And Tom is doing his best to make sure that his friends actually believe what he is saying because we, the audience, know that it is true, but no one else does. And he has figured out exactly what is going on with the GGG, that they are the ones who are responsible for the bombing of the plant. They are the ones who are responsible for the death of Howie. They're the ones who murdered Dewey. And he brings that to Charlie, and Charlie's question is why? which makes sense considering how much they've done to obscure their own perception. The perception of the GGG in the minds of the populace is that they are a social club and not that they are a hate group. Why doesn't become as clear because why really means you don't know what this group is that you are all members of. And again, Tex, well, I should mention twice this week that we're reminded that Tex is uh, illiterate because he signs his name with an X, both on the, the good luck card and on the, the petition that Merle brought. But then Tex again mentions that this special officer is coming in. And, well, we did hear a mention of this person's name in an earlier episode this week. In through the door walks Dennis Foley. And if for some reason you didn't watch all of season one, certainly he was a major part of that whole season. So I, maybe if you don't recognize him, you got to go back some. But the short and long of it is that Dennis and Mary had a sexual affair and that was a big problem for Tom. A big problem for Tom and Mary's relationship. 
So if Dennis is the special cop, I'm not hopeful for Tom. I don't think that Dennis is mean-spirited. I don't think that Dennis would try to do something bad to Tom. But I also think that Dennis is as selfish as any of the men outside are, right? Uh, and by that I mean Tex and Merle and Dennis. Those three men are specifically selfish. And I don't think that bodes well. I think that's bad news. So yeah, like I mentioned, we have 10 weeks of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman left to watch. And yeah, wow, I this week has been just slug after slug in the face. So thank you so much for watching with me. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, and impressions in the comments. Thank you so much for sleeping pills by moonlight and chicken soup by daylight. And we will see you next week in Fernwood.